The country is racing to the moon, quite literally. Uh, Russia has successfully launched its inaugural moon landing spacecraft after over four decades today. The mission aims to achieve the distinction of being the first country to achieve a gentle landing on the lunar south pole, an area thought to contain valuable reservoirs of water ice. Russia's moon mission's timing, however, is unmissable. Russia seems to be in a competitive race with India, which sent its Chandrayaan-3 lunar lander to space just last month. Moreover, it's part of a larger competition involving the United States and China, both of whom have well-developed lunar exploration initiatives that focus on the southern region of the moon. According to Euro Borisov, the head of Russia's space agency Roscosmos, the lunar lander is anticipated to make contact with the moon's surface on August 21st. As Russia aims to restore its lunar prestige, it will be interesting to see which country achieves the soft landing on Earth's only natural satellite. Here's more. What's driving the new race to the moon? Major powers like the US, China, Japan and the EU have all been probing the moon over recent years. A Japanese lunar landing failed last year and an Israeli mission failed in 2019. There's been a focus on the South Pole where no country has been able to reach yet. Rough terrain makes landing difficult, but the prize could be historic. Ice that could be used to extract fuel, oxygen, and drinking water. Russia and India are racing to get there first. Yeah, Russia's aspirations towards the moon are mixed up in a lot of different things. I think Asaf Siddiqui is a professor of history at Fordham University. There's always been speculation that there's water on the moon, and that's important if you if you want to build permanent settlements on the moon. So I think what Russia is trying to do is really spearhead that investigation and like be at the forefront of it. So this the fact that they're exploring the South Pole isn't an accident. Astronomers have wondered about water on the moon for centuries, which is a hundred times drier than the Sahara Desert. It was only in 2020 that NASA confirmed the existence of water there. India sent up its Chandrayaan-3 lunar lander last month after the Chandrayaan-2 failed in 2019. But Russia may also have political ambitions behind its space missions, especially as it faces sanctions from the West over the war in Ukraine. First and foremost, it's an expression of national uh, power on the global stage. Russia wants to go to the moon, partly to assert its national place on the with the big big guy, so to speak. China has already announced plans to return humans to the moon. The U.S. has a major prog program called Artemis that it is uh, in, in the middle of. So there's a lot of act activity going on. Uh, Russia, because it lacks the economic power of the United States, has allied with China. So it's possible that what the Chinese do, the Russians may actually piggyback on top of that um, in the next 10, 15 years. What's driving the new race to the moon? Major powers like the US, China, Japan and the EU have all been probing the moon over recent years. A Japanese lunar landing failed last year and an Israeli mission failed in 2019. There's been a focus on the South Pole where no country has been able to reach yet. Rough terrain makes landing difficult, but the prize could be historic. Ice that could be used to extract fuel, oxygen, and drinking water. Russia and India are racing to get there first. Yeah, Russia's aspirations towards the moon are mixed up in a lot of different things. I think Asaf Siddiqui is a professor of history at Fordham University. There's always been speculation that there's water on the moon. And that's important if you if you want to build permanent settlements on the moon. So I think what Russia is trying to do is really spearhead that investigation and like be at the forefront of it. So this the fact that they're exploring the South Pole.